name is Amy Albright and I own the Pendleton Bookshop. Well, I started thinking and dreaming and talking to people about this years and years ago. Um, I, my husband and I moved to Pendleton about seven years ago. And um, even when we moved here, even though I wasn't able to do it right then, I was thinking about it, dreaming about it, and I started to watch real estate properties. And I would talk to all kinds of people about it. And um, actually what happened is that one of the people I told about it, she was a lady in the garden club I was involved in at the time, she remembered me saying something about wanting to open a bookshop. And when this beautiful space became available, she made sure I knew about it. So it just worked out. Um, I had. I talked to people that had opened bookshops before, um, got lots of advice, and I, um, it's just something I've wanted to do, and I wanted to have a bookshop here. I have a three-year-old daughter. She was smaller at the time. I had this great dream of her growing up in a bookshop, and I'm really grateful that I can do this. People have been wonderful. I, that's one of my very favorite things about being here. Um, I have regular customers. I have new customers, people that are still discovering the bookshop. I have authors that live in Pendleton and Clemson who have been wonderful supporters and um, encouragers. And I um, have just felt like people want me to succeed. And that really makes all the difference in the world. Tell me some other interesting things about people, how they've embraced this, this space. It's been really wonderful to see people come in and use this space for important life events. We had a wedding here. I had someone come and do their graduation celebration photographs here. Uh, I had someone come in and take prom photographs here. And then just yesterday, I had a couple come here on their first date. Um, they were going to multiple places. They were gonna go to the Blue Heron and the ice cream shop on the square and who knows what else, but my bookshop was part of that very first date. And it's just really a privilege to be part of people's, um, not just their everyday lives, but also their special, their special moments. They are so important for communities. Bookshops are a real, um, a real asset to a small town and a big city. I mean, people love to read. People love to walk around and just look at books. People like to discover books. Um, and, you know, um, it's something that the way that it's talked about is that it, there, I've, I've heard someone say it will, there will always be a place for a brick and mortar independent bookshop. Um, and I think that's true. I think uh, I, I order books online. I am a pragmatist. I know people are gonna order books online and I think that there's a place for that. Um, but I think there's also a place for this beautiful shop um, for people to come in and, and look at physical books. And um, I just think people like to come here. And I think um, back on how many times I've loved walking in the bookshop and looking around and how that makes a community um, it adds a special layer to a community that I think you can't find in another type of retail. I mean, you need a mix of everything um, to make a community um, interesting and, and diverse. And I am glad that I can bring this here. Well, I am so grateful that I was able to get this location and share it um, with Lake Hartwell Country. It is such a beautiful old building. The situation on the corner, it's right on the corner. It's on one of the ladies who came in here one day pointed out that this is the stops, the only stoplight. Actually, there's one more in Pendleton, but there's one stoplight here on the corner. And so I can describe to people, I'm in the building on the corner of the square where there's a stoplight. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a great location. It's just centrally located. It's a beautiful, tall old building. It looks great from the square. Um, there were already bookshelves built in. We didn't have to do, I didn't have to do a lot to come and move in here because there were gorgeous bookshelves and a counter already here. And so I just, it was almost like, a, well, Les McCall, the director of Lake Hartwell Country, said that it might be kismet or something like that in email when we were first getting this set up. And it just feels like it was really easy to, it was hard work, but it was easy to do because it just worked. You know, um, it's definitely important to the community. It has been here a long time. Um, we were talking earlier, 1850s, this building dates to you. And people remember this building. Um, people that have lived here a long time, um, they have different memories, different associations with it. The, there's a small research library still down here on the main floor. People can still access um, Lake Cartwell Country, also has archives upstairs. And people wanna come in and learn, they know that this is a place they can learn about history. Um, and so I'm so glad that those things can still be here too. Um, so it's wonderful that this building can serve a double purpose. People can come in and research their family history. They can learn about the area and they can also look at um, new books that are popular and being talked about. Um, there was, I, I'm trying to remember, there's one man who, um, I think his uncle or someone owned a building right there and he remembered this building from way back. There was a woman who, I think she, I think she was a child. She was maybe in her 70s or 80s and she was a child when she came here. Um, and that was a really special conversation. 
Um, I had someone tell me that uh, their son or someone saw the ghost here that is, you know, people talk about. You know, there's all kinds of stories that people have about the building, whether it's just a building that they looked up at and wondered about or whether they have some history with it themselves. Now, have you heard the ghost? No, I have not. <laughs> okay. I am intentionally a general bookstore. Um, my husband and I had this conversation. And he's like, you know, I think that's really what you need to be for this community because there, I am right now the only independent bookshop in Pendleton and Clemson, as far as I know. And uh, so I really try to have something for the baby up to, I have some large print books. Um, I have every age, every stage I try to. And I have new and second hand, and that's great too because not everyone can afford a hardcover new book. <laughs> and not everyone wants to spend their money on a hardcover new book, but then some people want to buy a nice, um, some special gift and they come in and, and do that, and that's great too. But I try to have something for a wide range of people. Um, and I try to have some of the very best sellers. The American Bookseller Association gives out really great data about the best sellers from indie bookshops around the country, and I get that weekly. So I have my thumb on what indie bookshops around the country are selling, and I can even look at regional data if I want to. Um, so I really try to have some of those very popular books, some classics, um, and then some unex like just unexpected things. And I also really pride myself on carrying local authors. Um, and that is what my podcast is about. Uh, my goal is to do 12 podcasts this year. We just released my first batch. There are three podcasts you can get to through my website, pendletonbookshop.com. I interviewed Emily Martin. She is right here in Pendleton. She's an author and illustrator, and she's fascinating. Um, and then I interviewed Nick Brown, who wrote Bang Bang Crash, which is a memoir. He was a drummer and a novelist and just came out with his memoir. And then they have an in-conversation interview with each other. And so that's my model going forward, three podcasts at a time. Um, and it's a great opportunity to get to know some fabulous authors that live right here around us. And I'm really just so grateful I can help bring those people, um, their attention, attention to them, to the community. People come in and it's been really fun to hear people come in and say they've just gotten into reading again or for the first time or whatever it is. Uh, and I love that. I love, um, one woman came in and she was talking about liking, she liked to read, she wanted to read before bed and um, she had a small child or two and she liked, I think it was mysteries or popular something. And I just was able to kind of pull a stack together and show it to her. And she walked away with, I think, two or three books. And it's really a pleasure. It's one of the greatest joys of owning a bookshop is just being able to um, have someone come in the door that wants to be entertained or that wants to be challenged by reading something and to be able to show them some options and maybe show them something that they haven't seen before. Of course, I've loved books since I was a child. <laughs> um, my mom and dad credit, there's a woman that, um, babysat me. I would go over to her home and she had a book corner and they credit Mrs. Shaw with my love of reading. Um, I have been a book nerd basically my whole life. I just, I love, I love reading. I love writing. It's, um, it's a pleasure to be able to be in a room full of books and to talk to the people that come through the doors. And I've always been in at least, well, not always, but I'm, I'm in more than one book club right now. <laughs> Can't keep up with the reading as I think that's very relatable, but, um, I just am so grateful that I can be, like I said, in a room full of books and talking to people about them. Oh, I have so many ideas and so many plans. <laughs> I would love, I have grand, a grand scheme that who knows what will happen one day, but my main thing is that I want to have a bookshop here in Pendleton that's still here 50 years from now, and I want to still be working here. Um, so, you know, I got into this um, for the long haul. I want to do this for the long term. My, I intentionally started small. I didn't, I didn't get a business loan. <laughs> I wanted to start small and um, grow as I can, grow slowly, sustainably. See, I wanted to, I want, it's a benefit of that is I get to see what the community wants and what they respond to. And um, I really do want this, um, the bookshop to be here in Pendleton in some form for the long haul. And that, that's part of why I called it the Pendleton Bookshop. I wanted something classic and that would last forever. And I asked the graphic designer who did my logo to consider what a 50 year old bookshop, like think 50 year institution basically. And uh, I, that's just my dream for the bookshop and for this community. Okay. You can go on my website, pendletonbookshop.com. I also have an Instagram account at the Pendleton Bookshop. I am open Thursday through Saturday, nine to six. I have two wonderful people who work here too, Emily and Marcy, but um, it's primarily me, but Thursday through Saturday, nine to six. Why is it important that, that y'all are allowing a bookshop to be in this space in, in light of what's been going on here over the years? 
it, I think it's important that our organization, you know, we've been here since 1968. We've always had a research library. We've had archives upstairs. We've collected artifacts and preserved the history of the upstate, uh, Anderson, Oconee, and Pickens counties. Uh, it's important that this space remain one uh, that's that's safe for education, for learning, uh, for people to enrich themselves. And uh, our office moved, so we had this lower level that was available. And um, we're so happy that the bookshop took that space and kind of kept that uh, historic mission going. Uh, the brief history is it was built in the 1850s uh, as a general store. Uh, in the 1870s, the Hunter family took it over uh, completely, and it became known as Hunter's Store. Uh, James Hunter was a blacksmith in the Pendleton area. Uh, he wanted to get out of blacksmithing, and he opened up the, the dry goods store here. Um, it, it continued like that until the 1930s. Uh, they had built a second store, so this served as a repair shop, as a storage space. Uh, it was just kind of a vacant building for a while. And then in 1968, uh, our, our, excuse me, our organization was founded, uh, the Pendleton District Commission, uh, to uh, run tourism marketing and also uh, the historical aspect of our upstate history. Um, so we've been here since 1968, collecting histories, preserving documents and artifacts, and just kind of uh, protecting the history of Pendleton and the upstate here in this building for more than 50 years now. Correct. We still have a portion of the, the downstairs level that's served for our research archives. Uh, we have plenty of genealogy and reference books for local history. Uh, we have vertical files and photographs downstairs. And our main archives is upstairs. And that's where we keep our older, more important documents, uh, textiles, and just kind of our larger collections that wouldn't fit downstairs. Absolutely. Uh, it's one of the oldest buildings downtown. Uh, it is still maintained its architectural integrity over the years. Uh, the, the facade has changed, but the building has not. Uh, and it's, it's one of the most beautiful pieces of architecture that's still in the downtown area. You know, if you want to come research here, it's by appointment. You can either contact Amy and she'll contact me, or you can contact me at josh at lakehartwellcountry.com. Uh, if you have any research questions, if you want to see documents, if you want to see our photo collections, we have quite a few uh, photo collections upstairs that all pertain to local history. So if you want to see anything, just give me a call.